Hi, I'm Andy with the San Juan Soil and Water Conservation District in Northwest New Mexico. This backyard conservation workshop video will be on water smart water features. If you watched our previous video on building a pond, you may have heard about you know, the difference between building a pond in say the Pacific Northwest versus the American Southwest. A very, you know, Pacific Northwest being a very wet uh, environment and with lots of rain and higher humidity versus the American Southwest, which is higher elevation, much drier, much hotter, and strong winds that cause a lot of evaporation. So, why do we need to be water smart here in New Mexico? Well, just looking at the difference between Farmington, New Mexico, and the rest of the United States, you can see that we get a lot less rain per year on average, a lot less snowfall, a lot less number of precipitation days, far more sunny days, higher average temperatures, but also a higher UV index and higher elevation. Higher elevation means thinner air, which means increased water evaporation. As you can see on over here on the right from the OS Drought Monitor, New Mexico is pretty much consistently in a drought. We've been in a drought for over 17 years and it's still going. Um, We're typically in a severe or extreme and sometimes exceptional drought. New Mexico has been getting less rain than average and higher temperatures than average, meaning that our drought is getting worse each year. So how does all this higher elevation, higher temperature, and low water and you know, low humidity have uh, calculate into water loss? So in our region here in New Mexico, during the heat of summer, we will lose one inch or more of water per day where that water is exposed. That's due to the, the dry winds with you know, typically 5% you know, humidity winds uh, blowing across the surface, uh, the higher temperatures, the higher elevation. All of that uh, is taken into account when we calculate how much water we will lose. So if you're losing uh, one inch of water on your surface per day, let's see what that equates to. One gallon is 231 cubic inches. So one square foot is 144 square inches. So one inch of water loss on one square foot of surface will lose 0.625 gallons, or if you have two square feet of surface, you will lose about 1.25 gallons of water per day for every two square feet of surface you have. Now, if you watched our building a pond video, you saw that I was using the pond I built in Oregon as an example. So I calculated what we would be losing if we would be, were to build that pond here in New Mexico. That pond had a rough surface area of 270 square feet, and you multiply 270 square feet multiplied by 0.625 gallons per square foot of water loss. Uh, that was, you know, if you're losing one inch. And that means that every day, we would be losing 168.75 gallons or more by building this pond that I built in Oregon here in New Mexico. And if you calculate that out per month, that's 5,062 gallons per month. That's a lot of water to just uh, go up in there. So in Oregon, where we had our pond, we were typically losing one to two inches of water depth per month meaning that we we're only losing about one to 100 to 300 gallons per month, as opposed to 5,000 gallons of water per month. Now, that if you were to build this pond here in New Mexico, you also have to consider the financial cost of upkeep of that water, not just the amount of water that's being wasting. Depending on your billage and uh, usage rates, you could increase your water bill from 15 to $35 or more just per month for keeping your pond filled. So, what are some ways to reduce your water loss in your pond? And the thing is, you don't want to just pick one, you want to do as many of these as you can. First and foremost, as I mentioned in our building a pond video, protect the liner. You can lose gallons and gallons of water every day from a tiny pinhole in your liner. It'll just keep flowing out. So watch the water, the level of your water. If it's going down quite quickly, you might have a leak somewhere in your liner. Also make sure to use liners that are resistant to UV damage, especially here in New Mexico. 
These days, your higher quality pond liners are going to be your polyurethane or your reinforced polyethylene. And even still, if you use a high quality liner that is more resistant to UV damage, you want to minimize its exposure and leave any algae that grows in place. That algae will build up a layer and protect the liner from the sun exposure. Also, as I said before, check for leaks. Watch for drops in the water level that are going down quickly. There are pond and uh, plant and animal safe dyes that you can use. Um, if you have a rapid leak, you can find where it is. Basically, you turn off any water flow or water pump that you have, any filters, turn that all off, let the water kind of settle over a couple hours. Then put a couple drops of dye in your pond and watch where it flows. It will typically flow towards the leak. Also, visual inspection, just checking around the areas around your pond. If one side has a little bit of uh, better plant growth or has, um, you know, kind of like, you know, wetter ground that you can tell, that's likely where you're losing your water from. Reduce the water flow using smaller waterfalls or using timers. If you're gone at work, which these days many of us are working from home, so it might be nice to have that waterfall going all day, but if you're going into the office every day, and you're, or at least during the week, and you're not at home to enjoy the waterfall, get a timer, put it on that waterfall pump, and turn off the waterfall. The less water that's just constantly flowing through the waterfall, the less evaporation you're going to have. And finally, shade any exposed water. This is also one of the most important ones. You can use trees, plants, your home. If you, plant, uh, if you build your pond on the north side of your home, maybe your home will even shade part of your pond. You can build trellises over your pond. And finally, you can use bird balls. These were originally used in water reservoirs um, to reduce the amount of birds um, that were landing in the reservoirs and mucking up the water reservoirs, but they then found that they were actually doing a great job at not only preventing birds from, you know, defecating in the reservoir water, but also they're reducing water loss. So now a lot of uh, canals and water, uh, man-made waterways for irrigation and also reservoirs are using bird balls like these to cover the surface to reduce the evaporation by over 80%. So bird balls are an option. While they might be not be aesthetically pleasing, um, you don't need them all year round. You pretty much you're you know mostly focusing on using them during the hottest and driest parts of summer when you get the most amounts of water loss. So again, protecting that liner, there's a few things you can do, making sure that it's completely covered. In the picture here on the left, you can see that the rocks are overreaching or uh, spread out over the liner a little bit so that they cast shade or basically protect the liner from direct sun. Um, that's one way that you can protect the liner. Also, as I said, not scrubbing that algae off of it. In the winter, when your pond will be freezing, or at least the surface of it will be freezing, there's two major things you can do to protect the pond liner. One is make sure that you dig your pond at the deepest part at least three feet deep. Find out where your, uh, your frost layer is in your region, and if you're in a colder region, you might need to go a little bit deeper, but if you dig your pond deep enough underground where that part of the ground doesn't freeze, then that part of your pond also won't freeze. So you can have a layer of water at the bottom of your pond with a thick layer of ice on top of it. When, your water, when the water in your pond freezes completely all the way through, it expands and it produces sharp cracks of ice at the edge, and that ice can puncture and cut into your liner. Another thing you can do in winter for, to protect your liner is put uh, basketballs, volleyballs, some type of rubber ball. You can just get a kid's like rubber ball and put a couple of those in your pond, one on each side, and they'll probably float around and that's okay. Um, but what that does is when the pond is freezing and the ice is expanding, those are softer than your pond liners. So the ice will expand and press into those rubber balls before it presses into the liner of your pond, further protecting the pond liner. Also, covering up to 80% of the surface. 
uh, it doesn't have to be with something, you know, plastic like, you know, those bird balls. You can use plants to cover the surface. Now, obviously your plants aren't all going to cover the surface that first, you know, when you first build your pond, it takes time for them to build up. So find other ways, other method, methods to cover the surface. Um, you can use shade from nearby trees. If trees are nearby and they can offer shade, that'll reduce evaporation from direct sunlight on the water. Um, and obviously, the more plants you have, the better ecosystem you're going to have in life within your pond. The better it's all going to work together. Also, the more plants you have, those plants will eventually outcompete the algae, and you'll have less algae in your pond. And finally, if you want to go for a water feature that uses even far less water than a pond because there's a lot less surface area, you can go with a pondless water feature. These are basically, you know, stone features that have water bubbling up out of them and have water moving across their surface. And if you set them up with a timer so, or just a switch so you can turn it on and enjoy it when you're outside, you're going to have almost no water loss because it's only going to be on when you're outside or home enjoying it or at least a lot less water loss. Also an option is just building a pondless waterfall. This is an example. Both of these are examples from San Juan Nursery in Farmington, New Mexico. And this example here is a waterfall that just goes into a gravel base with the pump underneath and then pumps it back up to the top. Now you can get a lot of algae buildup on it because there's no plants, but just start adding plants. If you were to build this with a little bit of a a small pool or reservoir that you could plant a couple plants in right where the water fell in, then you'd have some plants growing in it to pull out those nutrients and reduce the amount of algae that you'll have growing in your waterfall. Also again, put it on a timer or a switch so it's only on and running when you're home or when you're outside to enjoy it. Another option for pondless water features are small water tubs. These are actually just planters where they have a little drain hole in the bottom. Use a silicon aquarium glue to seal that little hole in the bottom, and now you have a water planter. I think these are typically you know, 5 to $15, depending on where you shop for them. And you can have uh, you know, larger plants planted inside an actual plant, a water planter inside them, and then you can have floating plants around them. So here we have arrow plant with water hyacinth. Here we have uh, irises with looks like a calla or canna and water lettuce. And then over here we have chameleon plant with uh, frog bit on the bottom. Again, always make sure to check with your local and state uh, laws and regulations on what plants are invasive and not allowed in your area. But these little water feature, water, um, Pondless water features have very minimal water loss because there's very little surface area. This one here, I think uh, in Oregon, granted we have less water loss in Oregon, but this one here with all the frog bit grown in, we would typically have to fill that up, you know, an inch or two of water, maybe once or twice a month. If you have any questions about water smart water features, please be sure to reach out to us. You can reach us at our website, sanjuanswcd.com. Send us an email or give us a call, and we hope to hear from you. Thank you.